When it comes to sagas and transfers, Manchester United, we really are the kings of it. Somehow we managed to find ourselves in this situation a lot. But this Anthony situation that's now developed following an exclusive interview with Fabrizio Romano, where Anthony goes into detail about his conversations with the club, his ambitions, his dreams, which I'm going to cover in this video and, and we're going to speak about. This Anthony situation is developing into something uh, not unprecedented, but just unexpected. I mean, as an Ajax fan, if you're in the comments, you can let me know. As a United fan, you can let me know. But this interview that came out yesterday with Fabrizio Romano was unexpected, I would say. But Anthony, as he has done the whole time, basically, been doing everything within his power to try and force the move. And he obviously feels that at this point in time, he needs to speak to Fabrizio Romano, use Fabrizio Romano's platform to get his story across. Let me run through everything that he's had to say. And you can let me know what your reaction is because, wow, this is, uh, yeah, as I said, it's not unprecedented, but it kind of feels a little bit unprecedented. It's a bit like Peter Odom Wingy turning up at the bloody, uh, what was it, QPR's training ground? Anyway, let's run through everything that you had to say. The first thing he said, he was asked, how is the negotiation for your transfer going? He said, since February of this year, my agents came to Amsterdam to inform my ex of my desire to leave the club, to face a new challenge and that some interested clubs would arrive and with them certainly a great offer. And he said, in June of this year, I interrupted my vacation and came personally to inform the managers of Ajax, including the new coach, about my wish to leave and that they should consider this possibility because it was a project for two seasons. He said, during the window months, meetings continued and I also received a proposal from Ajax for a contract renewal. I made it clear once again, I want to leave. Now, it's very interesting there because Anthony's come out there. Let's run back through that quote there. He's saying that he told Ajax as early as February. Sorry, this one here. As early as February that he wanted to leave. And to, he wanted to leave Ajax. Reiterated it in June. Turned down the contract renewal. I want to go. I mean, he, he can't do anything really. He can't do anything more than what he has done so far. <laughs> and then this interview on top. Anthony wants to join Manchester United. And for a lot of you, that's a big thing about a good signing that you want. You want to make sure that they want to play for the club. Anthony's doing everything. And as I said, the fact that he's come out with this interview, it goes to show that stalemate is there. And we know why the stalemate is there. Chelsea want 44 million or so for Hakim Ziyech. And Hakim Ziyech is the replacement for Anthony for Ajax. And they don't want to pay that. We're at a stalemate. Here's a bit more information on that situation from Anthony himself. What happened on Friday was what he was asked. He said, today in a meeting with the club, I expressed my old interest in leaving. Only this time with a considerable was a considerable, sorry, offer on the table from, of course, Manchester United. Others had already arrived. Ajax refused with the, the argument that they only have five days to replace me. Now, that's a semi a fair argument from Ajax. Until you go back to this quote here, to understand that he told them in February that he wanted to leave. He reiterated in June that he wanted to leave. Even when the contract renewal came up, he wanted to leave. Yet, Ajax still haven't done it. Now, at this point, this is where you say, like, okay, Sam, but Manchester United didn't come in for an offer for Anthony until last week. And I'll be like, yeah, fair enough. But that was like, what is it? It might have not even been like, it might have been not the Wednesday gone, the Wednesday before. What's that, 10 days ago? When the first bid went in at the 80 million that Ajax wanted. And they knew full well that he wanted to leave in February, in June, turn down the contract renewal. Yes, it's a situation where Manchester United could have gone a lot earlier with Anthony and the bid we did. But let's not try and pretend that this is only five days left now. This was 15 days left when they turned the original bid down. And that's plenty of time to refine a replacement. But it's, it's, as I say, it's, it's a bit crazy watching all this unfold, isn't it? Very, very surprised. Surprise maybe is not the right word, but this is modern day transfers. They're soap operas in themselves. Wish it was simpler than that. I kind of like the Casemiro situation. That's what we all want. We just want those. Play you want. Play up, bid, accepted, moved, all within a week. Done. That's much better. More details here from Anthony. He was asked, why don't Ajax want to let you go? He said, I'm not asking Ajax to release me. I'm asking Ajax to sell me with the highest bid ever for an Eredivisie player. I've been insisting on this theme since February. 
that the club could rebuild the team with peace of mind. And I think that's the most important part of this whole interview, right? And I suppose in the goodness of time, we'll find out. I mean, I mean, I don't really feel Ajax can keep him at this point. Not with everything that has happened that he continues to do. Now, there might be Ajax fans in the comments saying, look, Sam, uh, he'll settle down. He's got the World Cup to play for. He'll be fine. It feels like some bridges have been burned here. I think I reckon there's some bridges burnt between um, Anthony and Ajax fans. I reckon there's some bridges burnt between Anthony and Ajax. And I feel like there's some bridges burnt between Ajax's board and Anthony as well. Two ways. Because if he did really tell them back in February, he said, look, man, I think I want to go on to a new project. Reiterated that in June. Turned the contract renewal down. Made it abundantly clear that he wanted to leave. Told them in February so they'd have time to sort it. I don't really feel like you can use the excuse of this only coming five with five days left in a window. Especially, as I said, when that first bid went in for 80 million, which was the price that Ajax wanted, at 10 days ago. That's over two weeks. That is a lot of time to find a replacement. But there's more details here and more information from Anthony. He was asked how he feels about the club. He said, I was very happy in Amsterdam. People were there was was. Past tense. I won titles at Ajax, made friends and built part of my career. But now I reinforce that I'm ready and full of motivation to follow my story and my dreams. A bit more on this, he said, what's your position now? He said, people need to listen to me and understand that my motivation moves me towards happiness. I need this to continue performing at a high level. Ajax will always be in my heart. And unfortunately for Ajax, what they've got here is a player clearly with some serious ambition to be at the very, very top. And in a summer, and I've said this quite a few times now, and I'll reiterate it one more time, you can't expect to have a player with the ambitions of Anthony and keep him happy at a club where your manager is gone, your assistant manager is gone, your starting centre-back is gone, your starting right-back, your starting left-back, your starting central defence midfielder, your starting striker, all in one summer, and expect a player of his age to then just want to sit, his words, not mine. Where is it there? Pro it was talking about the project. Where is it? That was it. Uh, he's effectively saying, look, I know I, he doesn't want to stay and wait for Alfred Schroeder to build this new Ajax team in the same way that Ten Hag had his team torn apart in 2019 and rebuilt it to that one last year. He doesn't want to wait around for that anymore. He wants to leave. And the fact that, as I say, I'll, most important message for me in this whole video is the fact that if he told Ajax in February and then reiterated it in June, I don't think Ajax can come out now and go, wow, geez, we're surprised. Did not see this curveball coming. When that should have been planned, prepared, and everything all in hand. The Ziyech conversation should have been done a long time ago. The feelers put out. It feels like Ajax, I suppose, didn't expect United to come back in this. I mean, look, United are not innocent in this whole situation. I'm not saying that. Far from it. I wish that if that bid for Anthony had gone in six weeks ago, I think it probably could have got done at 80 million quite easily. But instead, we're now stuck in a bit of a rat race towards the end of the window with Ajax scrambling and United scrambling. But we've got Anthony on our side. He's doing everything to force this transfer. And it was a final message here uh, from Anthony to Ajax's fans. And he said this, he goes, I hope the Ajax fans understand me because the future for a football player is a totally uncertain thing and opportunities can be unique. My message is one of gratitude for Ajax, the club, and the fans. He cannot do anything else apart from tell Ajax in February that he wants to leave, reiterate in June that he wants to leave, turn down the contract renewal, refuse to train, refuse to turn up, put in a transfer request, do an interview with Fabrizio Romano. I mean, Anthony has done absolutely everything within his own power to leave Ajax. And it's not as if Ajax are getting shafted here because they will get uh, a, a fee for Anthony, which is going to be around about 75% of their last year's turnover. And that will really help the club over the next few years in terms of actually truly rebuilding again. Uh, but Ajax are, uh, Ajax are a selling club. It is, it's the business model to bring through one of the best academies in the world, if not the best academy in the world, up there right with La Masia. That's what they do. They turn players into top-level stars and sell them on. It's just that everything's come at once this summer. Everything with Ten Hag and Gravenberch and Masraoui and Haller and Talia Fika and now Anthony on top of that and Martinez too. 
It's a lot of moving parts that Ajax didn't want to do. But a player of his ambition, Ajax, man, you put a price on his head. You then rejected it. And we've now found out from the horse's mouth that he told you in February that he wasn't going to be staying there. He reiterated it in June. That's not all act surprise at the end of the window. United, yes, we could have moved earlier. But Ajax, you should have had those preparations, those plans in place. Because Anthony wants to leave. He wants to join Manchester United. I don't know. At this point, I really don't know how Anthony stays at that club. Maybe you can tell me something different in the comments. You can let me know. But I wanted to give my thoughts on that. Oh, wow. It's, just, it's a crazy situation. It really, really is. But you can let me know what you think about it in the comments below. And whether you think that this is now going to lead to United signing Anthony or some sort of, I don't know, what's Ajax's next move? What's Anthony's next move? What's United's next move? Let me know what you think.